Hi, it's Bill, the Knee Pain Guru. Today we are going to talk about the Knee Pain Relief Chart and how to use it for your whatever your situation is. Um, and we're going to use it, we're going to translate it today because there's some, there's a lot of people that get stuck, especially people with knee pain, they get stuck in the diagnosis. And when they get stuck in the diagnosis, it's like they don't know how to translate it to the chart. Because with this approach, the knee pain guru approach, we aren't looking at the diagnosis as much as where your knee hurts, which is the only reason you went to the doctor. The only reason you're on this call is because there's pain or stiffness, range of motion issues. We and we'll get on the same length. Um, begin to use the same language as far as terminology because one person was like well bill my knee doesn't hurt but it aches well, it's the same thing because the signaling is coming from the nervous system that's where the source of the problem you're having with your knee is your nervous system and this is of course is going on the assumption that you've gone to the doctor and you've gotten a diagnosis to determine if something is broken or torn or not. Knowing that, then we can start creating comfort in the knee by getting the pressure off of the nerves that are causing the pain to get you relief, which is what you want, which is why you're here. Um, if you got questions, start asking them. Like, let me know your situation. Uh, I'm going to drop a link for the... Uh, I did a little bit of translating, like for specific diagnoses, like Baker cyst and bone on bone and um, advanced arthritis and plain old arthritis and patella syndrome, um, patella tendonitis, patella femoral and chondromalacia type of issues. So I've done a little bit of that. However, everybody's knee hurts in different places. And that's why we've created this chart which the link should be in the description of the video. And I am also going to drop another link. Uh, let me see here. So if you have questions, start asking them now about what you have going on with your knee, uh, what your diagnosis is, dealing with doctors or physical therapists or whatever that is. And we'll start to sort through this and make sense of it for you. Without your participation, it doesn't work so well. So I'm not going to bite. Can't. We're in a virtual environment. So start answering questions over on the site. Good morning, Maria. And I, we have a couple of uh, ear, earphone sent in a question. Uh, I have an ACL tear, uh, millimeter tear. I walk normally with pain for six months. What should I do? Uh, I will give you your strategy right now. Uh, was My first question is, did you get the ACL repair? Because we're talking about two different issues. One issue is the ACL is torn and the knee is not mechanically sound. So there's issues going on with the knee that possibly medical intervention would be helpful for you to get to a place where you didn't have pain in your knee. If you've had an ACL repair, <clears throat> if you've had an ACL repair and you still have pain, which many people do, I did, which is how I got into all of this, then we would need to determine where the specific area of the knee that's bothering you is having the issue. So let me get the link. I, I should have been prepared, but you know what they say about shooting. Let me see. Here we go. Okay. You can watch this video live on YouTube, which you could also... Oh, second here. Everyone will soon learn the bill is great as far as getting people out of knee pain. But when it comes to technology, I struggle at times. Okay, there's a link for the, um, for the chart. You can see a picture of the chart. It's going to be 
one of these that you could print out on your computer. It shows you the specific modules that you would work with for your kneecap if it hurts inside above the knee joint, inside below the knee joint, outside below the knee joint, outside above the knee joint, <laughs> at the knee joint. And then we'll make more sense of that as we go. Good morning, Nexodus. Surely, been walking on toe. I've been consciously trying to put foot down. It seems, uh, Shirley, you're going to want to put that type of feedback in the Quit Your Quack program. That is, I know we have to focus. So the Facebook group. Now, Shirley is a member of a group coaching program where I work with clients twice a week in a format, not similar format. However, the depth of what we go into is much different. Right now, this is more about educating you about my approach, how it's different than the conventional Western medical model, and getting you, you know, intro introduction. This is like we're shaking hands for the first time. And once you understand my approach and that the focus is on comfort and how comfort lines up with the neurological ability of your body to heal what's going on. Comfort is different than pain. <laughs> comfort is different than strengthening the legs in the hopes that the pain will go away or taking a drug or a shot in the hopes that when the drug or the shot wears off that the pain won't be there. Or having your knee getting diagnosed by the doctor as being normal or there's nothing wrong and they're hoping that the surgery will make the pain go away. You Honestly, you don't really care about that. At least I would imagine you wouldn't care about that. Your focus is on the pain. And the shortest distance between where you're at and where you want to be is out of pain. You don't care about your diagnosis. You don't care most people don't care what's going on with their knee as much as they want their life back. They want to be able to be active and do the things that they want to do. If they're in pain, the pain is on their mind. They're afraid to step. You're concerned about doing those things that you would normally do in your busy, active life day to day because you got to think about the knee. Well, here are tools, here are specific videos, these correspond with specific videos that work with teaching you how to get comfort in the area of your knee that you're having pain by getting the pressure off of the nerves that are the width of an eyelash. And it sends a neurological signal throughout from your knee, throughout your leg, throughout your body to your brain to tell it to relax and let go because it's comfortable. And when it relaxes and lets go, there's a little bit of space. And when there's space, guess what? Relief happens. So we got a number of people on the call. If you have questions, give me, give me your situation and we will start to work with what you have going on to translate this chart to specifically what you would need to do. If you go to that link on this page, it goes over some, some individual uh, diagnoses. Like if you have bone on bone or advanced arthritis, if you've had a knee replacement surgery, if you're dealing with range of motion, scar tissue, or knee extension and flexion issues, if you have patella tendonitis, patella femoral syndrome, chondromalacia, or kneecap pain, if you have IT, if you've been diagnosed with IT band syndrome. So here's the deal. You ask questions about what's going on and I can add that to the list to help you as well as other people as to the specific modules that would give you relief in your knee. I want to keep this in perspective. Knee pain many times doesn't affect only the knee. It affects the entire body. Your hips, your lower back, your feet, your calves, your hamstrings, your quads. A lot of times I've even had work with clients where it's affected their uh, neck and shoulders. Because of how you walk, the body has to compensate. 
and understanding that, that this approach, as we start relaxing tension in one part of the body, the body relaxes, you gain more awareness and understanding of what's going on in the knee, as well as how the knee relates to other parts of the body. Okay, Shirley, my sound is really bad. Okay, okay. Um, I can't help you there. I struggle with my own technical issues, Shirley. So I get you. Okay, let's see. Gina says, Bill, I have not had official diagnosis for my knee pain, but I have been told my ligament is torn. Any hope for me? Yes, Gina. Um, I, my ligament was torn. And just my own experience was I thought it was the end of the world. Um, like I literally, there, there was like, my life before the knee injury, my life after the knee injury. And it was a real transformative experience for me personally. I, you know, been, was involved in judo. I traveled and competed. I loved throwing people. That was my deal. And when Dr. Ellis was doing like the testing on my knee, they do the, the range of motion in the intrinsic movement of the joint to test the ligaments that cross inside your knee to see if they're torn and he did it one way and he's like yeah well bill we could do an mri but it'd be a waste of money uh, you tore the ligament the acl in your left knee uh, so in my mind i'm like got it schedule the surgery let's get this fixed and i'll be back on the judo mat by the end of the summer because this was june 20, uh, 1999. And, um, well, I got to the end of the summer, I got cleared from physical therapy and I still had lots of problems in the knee, as far as swelling, as far as pain, as far as extension and flexion. Uh, I felt like I was limping all the time, exhausted. I just break out in the sweat, just going to the mailbox. So, understand that there is life like on the other side of whatever you have going on with your knee. I don't care what your diagnosis is. I don't care what has happened to your knee. I don't care how long you've been dealing with the pain. There's a solution and it's through comfort. Now it may take time. It's going to be a journey. However, it's totally doable. Your body has the capacity to heal itself. Bottom line, end of story, period. Anyone else coming up and saying, oh, I've tried everything and nothing works, it they're full of it because that's they just don't understand the body on a deep enough level and everything they've been trying is about fighting the body, fighting the neurology, fighting the signaling that is telling your body to tense up to protect itself. That's what I got. Now you got me on a roll, Gina. Okay. Yes. So... And basically, yes, there's plenty of hope for you. You can get full range of motion back in your knee. You can get um, the strength back in your legs. You Like anything you want to do, you basically can do. Now, I'm going to be partial because it's what I found that works. And it isn't following the typical medical model approach. Because they're in a box and their box is to repair what's broken or torn or manage the pain. They don't know how to get you out of pain. Gina, let me know if that answers your question. Okay. Okay, let's see. Tricia, hi, what is patella stuff you said? I'm not good at spelling. Patella, P-A-T-E-L-L-A. It's in your kneecap. Your kneecap, like front of your knee. That's that bone, your patella, this bone is held in place by your patella tendon, which goes down here and goes up here. So someone who has patella femoral syndrome is going to have pain up in this area. And other people who have patella tendonitis will have pain down here. So this module, module nine, will help with patella issues. 
Okay, Shona says, bone on bone ligaments are weak, also popping constantly. Everyone, every every way I move, pain is worse at night. Yeah, it, here's what happens. When you have pain at night, your if the pain is only at night, what's happening is your body is at a level of tension during the day where it doesn't feel the pain. It's still using energy, which is probably why you're pretty exhausted throughout the day. What will happen is your body tenses up to protect itself so it doesn't feel the pain. At night, it starts relaxing and you're able to feel the tension on the nerves, the pressure on the nerves, which is the pain that you feel. You can think of it like a car that only shakes at 47 miles per hour. You go 46 miles per hour, doesn't shake. 48 miles per hour, doesn't shake. Only at 47 miles per hour. So your body is like the same thing. There's a certain tension pattern that is only going on when you're, I'm sorry, the tension pattern is always there, but it's not engaged or you don't feel the pain until your body relaxes enough to realize how tense it's been all day and then it starts to feel the pain. So I know a lot of people will resonate with that and understand that. Okay, bone on bone ligaments. Okay, Trisha, Gina, same. Not the judo. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Understood. Okay, ne Nexodus says, right, I deal with bone on bone, and the other left knee hurts like it gets too much pressure in hip and back feet issues. Right. So what happens? Let's stay apart from the knee just for a moment. Say you stub your toe. What happens when you stub your toe? The body tenses up. You go, ah, I stub my toe. Look how the tension begins to shift in the entire body. Normal natural response to pain. It's the normal natural response to tension. It's a normal natural response to a trauma an injury, an accident, or a surgery. Surgery, as much as it is there to help, is also a trauma to the body. The body takes on tension to protect itself from that experience. It's what we do when we don't feel safe, when we don't feel supported, when we don't feel listened to. The body tenses up to protect itself because it's afraid. Bottom line, end of story. That's the level of the neurology that we're working with. Uh, so what happens is you can't just say tighten up your knee <laughs> or just tighten up your toe because you stubbed your toe. It doesn't work that way. The body is a system. There's tension in order for you to walk, in order for you to move, in order for you to sit or stand. You have to have tension throughout your entire structure. So it's ignorant to think that if we just have pain or tension or discomfort or something in one part of the body, be it the toe, be it the knee, be it the hips or lower back, that it doesn't affect the rest of the structure. So, Nexodus, what you're feeling is the body compensating for something that happened first. And we don't necessarily know. We don't know, you know, what came first, <laughs> the knee pain or the hip pain, the back pain or the foot pain. We don't know. And if we try to get it, um, rationalize it, we can get stuck in trying to figure it out. Instead of tapping in to your body's ability to understand how to do it itself. And your nervous system, your neurology fires at 286 miles per hour to let go of tension. The very same speed at which it tenses up as a result of an accident, an injury, a surgery, a trauma. It tenses up at 286 miles per hour. We can teach it how to let go of the tension at that same, excuse me, at that same speed. All we need to do is begin to learn and understand how to create comfort by getting the pressure off of the nerves in the knee that are causing pain. In this chart, begins to give you that template to begin to work with your knee in comfort. There is a program on that link that I put on there. It leads to the comfort zone. 
it begins to walk you through. There's 11, 11 specific stretches that teach you how to get the pressure off of the nerves and the specific part of the knee that are causing the pain. This is just to help you understand which ones to work with based on where your knee hurts. And this video, this live stream, is here to help you if you have questions about your specific diagnosis, your specific situation, what you have going on, to zero in on the specific modules that are going to give you the most relief right now. Because they're not going to all work at the same time. They're not all going to work equally. They're not all going to work in the morning like they will in the afternoon. And they're not going to work today, Thursday, May 23rd, like they're going to work tomorrow, May 24th. So we have to understand that the body is constantly shifting and changing based on environmental factors. Your stress level. Did you drink enough water this morning? Uh, did you drink too much coffee? Did you have wine last night? Did you exercise too hard? Did you exercise not enough? Were you taking the right supplements? Did you just get off of a conversation with somebody <laughs> that you're really frustra frustrated about? It all affects the tension and stress your body feels, which affects how your knees, your hips, your lower back, your ankles, your feet, your entire body feels. And we're learning... With this approach, we're learning how to begin to relax the tension in one part of the body at 286 miles per hour so the rest of the body can begin to understand the level of tension that it's holding on to so we, we can start learning how to uh, relax and let go of the tension in those other places. Okay. Surely I plugs done the trick. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on there, but hey, we'll go with it. Okay, doesn't look like my mouse is working anymore. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, uh, it's gotten better though. Leveling my arm and rest and stretching. And here's the thing. People get into, many knee pain sufferers get into the, they, they justify their pain. And they'll say, well, it's not so bad. It's been worse. I could handle worse. I could deal with more. And what ends up happening is this doesn't serve you in any way, on any level. If you want to feel young and strong and have your body move smooth, fluid and smooth, you don't tolerate that. <laughs> and this builds up over time in our bodies and we justify it as like, no, oh, that's I'm just happens when we get older. That's just what the body does. There's nothing I could do. I've tried everything. And it's just not true. You, most people don't understand their body on a deep enough level to recognize how the neurology works and how the neurology can work with that of the reflexes. The same reflexes like when the doctor taps your knee with a hammer and your knee jumps and can let go of tension, uh, that the, and your knee jumps, you can't control it. So that is an involuntary action that your body just goes into as a result of the tapping of the rubber hammer on your patella tendon or right below your kneecap. Your body does the same thing right before you're about to fall asleep. You're about to fall asleep and you're feeling relaxed and all of a sudden you jerk. Everyone's had that experience. And that is a neurological spot response as the body's trying to let go of the tension from the day. These responses that your body has are happening on an unconscious level and they're involuntary, meaning you can't control them when your body jerks right before you go to sleep. The doctor is engaging that reflex. The doctor is engaging that reflex voluntarily, but it's just to test the reflexes. It's not getting those reflexes to work for you. There's a big difference. Now we take that understanding and that information about how the neurology can fire for us, and we start bringing it to a conscious awareness. 
to a specific part of my knee that hurts. And now I can begin to create comfort in that part of the knee. And the body can begin to let go of the tension that it's holding on to. However, because you have so much going on, I would point you towards one of my coaching programs. Because if you got knee pain, you're going to focus just on the knee. If you have hip and lower back and ankles and feet and your body's been compensating for a long time, the level of pain that you're dealing with is going to be more than this program you'll be able to address. Okay. Thanks. A genesis. Thanks for your program. Uh, so your program could help. Do you still offer Skype consults? If you have questions, Gina, ask them now. And I do offer consults. Uh, you can go, there, there's an appointment link, right? When you go to the knee pain guru at the top of the page, it says book appointment. You can schedule a time if you'd like to talk with me then. Uh, Nexodus, I choose not to take knee replacement nor cortisone shots. And, and here's the deal. You could choose not to take those for a while. And a lot of people do. A lot of people with advanced, arth advanced arthritis in bone on bone be like, I'm not going to do a knee replacement. Even people with beginning stages of arthritis, you know, just this is a side note. All diagnosis of arthritis is dehydrated joint. Bottom line, ask your doctor. All diagnosis of arthritis is dehydrated joint. And that just gets worse over time as the tension in as the tension in the knee increases because the pain increases the joint squeezes tighter together closer together and it squeezes out the synovial fluid in the joint which causes the knee to hurt worse which causes the knee to squeeze more so it's like this loop you're on and the more pain you feel the tighter the joint squeezes the more it gets dehydrated the more it wears and people have that mentality, well, it's not so bad. I can handle more. It's been worse. And that just gets worse over time. Now, a lot of people will say, with bone on bone, oh, I got bone on bone and it's a dehydrated joint. I'll just drink more water. My question to you is, is your body absorbing the water that you're drinking? And how do you get the water inside the joint? if you're not creating comfort to relax the tension so the water can get actually get in there? Good question. Okay. Uh, next it says, I rub aloe around my knees and back too. Oh, if um, give the video a thumbs up, like and subscribe to my channel, turn on the notifications so you're um, – so you're aware of future videos that I do. I do these twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays, 9.55 a.m. I'm actually going to have to get off of here shortly as the group coaching call that Shirley is in starts in, um, in about five minutes. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm sharing with my mom, too, as knee replacement already. Yeah, that's a big one. She'll need extensive help as well. Got to go, but I'll visit your site. Thanks, Shirley. What is the be best way to get fluid in there? Shirley, I'm going to cover that in a couple minutes. But the, the, the first step is to relax the tension in the joint. When you relax the tension in the joint, it creates the space so the fluid isn't going to be squeezed out. So that's the very first step. Create comfort, first and foremost. When the, the joint is comfortable, one, it's not going to hurt. And two, the body's ability to heal itself, it starts coming online. Okay. I'm not seeing any more questions come in. We've got a few people still on the line here. Uh, make sure to head over and check out uh, where is my mouse isn't working well today. The knee pain relief chart. A link should be in the description, and I'm going to put another one here at the bottom of the comment section. You can go over there and check that out. I would point you towards uh, signing up for the Comfort Zone, which is the program 
that gives you the instructions on the specific areas of the knee that you could begin to create comfort in. You're going to see a picture of this knee pain relief chart when you go to that link, and then it gives you the specific modules based on your diagnosis. Bone on bone, if you had a knee replacement, advanced osteoarthritis, scar tissue, range of motion, problem extending, problem bending, uh, patella tendonitis, patella femoral syndrome, chondromalacia, Baker cyst, there's another one I forgot, but it gives you the specific modules to begin working with to help you get relief. Okay, no more questions. I thank you all for being here. This is Bill Paravano, the Knee Pain Guru, signing off for today. Uh, next video is going to be on Monday. And uh, seriously, don't wait. You can get relief. 286 miles per hour. Click on that link. Go sign up for the Comfort Zone program. Thank you so much. Have a great day. I'll see you on the next one.